Hello Unity fans and welcome back to my game development series. In today's video we're going to do something a little different. A few of the previous videos have considered pathfinding and a unit's movement on the chosen path. These were more about the technical aspects of the pathfinding algorithm itself and how to make sure the unit's movement between the nodes of the path works well, taking into account possible collisions with other units. However, there's another important aspect of this topic which we haven't spent a lot of time on. How we design the implementation of this functionality into our game, its mechanics and the different kinds of tasks our units, buildings, UI and even AI needs to be able to perform. A large part of the practical application of pathfinding has to do with things like finding areas that would be suitable for certain buildings or actions rather than just finding a path from point A to point B. Today we'll consider how to achieve this functionality using the foundation of our pathfinding algorithm, but increasing the complexity step by step to end up with very useful and optimized mechanics based on pathfinding. Since we'd like to take a step back from the technical aspects and code in this video, we'll be considering the ideas visually with in-game scenarios. Let's get going. Although our pathfinding actually utilizes the segments of the hexes, we'll be considering the ideas visually and working with hexes as the base nodes. There's no need to complicate the visuals and the ideas can easily be transferred to segments. At its very core, our pathfinding has a starting point, a destination and a collection of connected nodes through which travel can take place. Each node has one or more next door neighbors, which count as the next potential steps on the path. Now, for a featureless monotone map like this, it's quite easy for the algorithm to find the best path. At this point, the distance between each pair of hexes is used as the cost to minimize, and the algorithm will quickly find the optimal path as the path with the smallest number of hexes to visit. There you go, you've got your first game. You can slap some ads onto it, run off to the game store page, dump it into the play for free pile. Hope someone finds it pressed into an obscure little corner and you get 10 million ad views. Or you could work on it a bit more. We need some features on our map to make things interesting. These can come in a variety of forms for a variety of different applications in the game. But in terms of pathfinding, the main impact they have is that they take some of the potential nodes out of contention when finding a path. You may not be able to scale a cliff or cross a river, but it also does not have to be all or nothing. Certain features could only slow you down or increase the cost of travel to and from that node, but still allow you through. For example, wading through marshland or snow, or even something as simple as walking slower when encountering an uphill slope. These can usually be handled by the combination of an access flag and some kind of cost calculation, which replaces the simple distance measure used previously. So you can't scale a cliff, but walking up and down a small hill may be better than going around it. Then again, if the hill becomes too steep, walking around becomes less costly again. And in terms of rivers, a bridge could unblock the path again, while roads in general could reduce the cost of a path. This is a lot more interesting already, and you may even earn a few ad views from it, but it's still only finding a path from point A to point B, both specified up front. A lot of functionality in the game requires exactly this, but we need to be able to do a lot more. Let's see why. At this stage, we are able to tell our algorithm to find a path from our woodcutter to this specific tree. It has to know where the unit starts from, and it needs to know the location of the specific tree. But once that tree has been cut down, do we have to manually select the next tree? This will be tedious. How about giving the pathfinder an order like, find a path from this unit to the closest tree. Now only one of the locations is specified, and the destination is open-ended. So where previously the algorithm picked most promising potential next steps by considering the distance between each hex and the target hex, 
It now has no idea in which direction the closest tree will ultimately turn out to be. At the start, it has no idea in which direction to aim. So what should it do? Well, it is still looking for the shortest path to something, so it should still keep considering the next most promising step as the one leading to the smallest cumulative cost to get to. And then just keep going until it finds a tree. The end condition simply changes from is the current hex the target location to does the current hex contain a tree. And there is no search heuristic to bias the algorithm towards a certain fixed target. On a monotone featureless map, this means just spiraling outward from the starting location. But on a map with features, this means visiting lowest cost hexes first. For example, traveling a few hexes along a road would be less costly than going one or two hexes over open terrain. But if no trees are found after a few hexes on the road, trying the open terrain closest to the unit starts becoming more promising. Then traveling a few hexes over open terrain would be less costly than scaling a steep hill. But if you can't find any trees on a large area on that open terrain, it starts becoming more promising to start climbing that hill. So when you construct a woodcutter's cabin and it employs a woodcutter, the game can automatically select the closest tree for him to chop down. And when he returns with the wood, the closest tree can again be determined, and so on. However, it gets a bit trickier. We may not want to chop down a tree right next to the woodcutter's cabin, since it will fall over into the cabin itself, which we don't want. So we add a few tests to our end condition. In this case, by testing whether any of the neighbors of the current hex contains a building. If so, we just do not consider that tree. And now, that end condition of a hex with a tree which is not next to a building can become anything we want it to be. If we want to run a sustainable business and want our woodcutter to plant some saplings around his cabin, we can search for an empty hex on which a tree can be planted. Again, we can enforce a rule of not planting a tree too close to a building. We could of course also limit the overall path cost, so the algorithm doesn't look too far away. A woodcutter having to walk half a day to get to a tree to chop is probably not worth it. So we're not just searching from unit to target anymore. We're searching from building to resource, unit to empty hex with additional constraints, and can even use this to look for the closest unit to the building. For example, if you have six idle citizens and want to employ a woodcutter, you don't have to look for a path from each of the six citizens to the building, then decide which one is closer. You could rather start at the building and keep searching until you find a hex with an idle unit on it. This is much more resource efficient. Taking these ideas further, and even into artificial intelligence territory, we can adjust it further to look for more elaborate end conditions. By testing an area of surrounding hexes, you could decide which areas are good for actually placing certain buildings, or planning strategic moves for example. Whatever you can realistically include in your end condition test can be used as a decision making factor and can be combined with the actual path cost to determine most favorable locations. By now, you should expect those ad views to roll in. But let's see if we can go full circle and get back to a scenario I'd actually prefer. One of no ad views again. But actually being warranted to charge a small price for your game. Let's combine the two main ideas we've used up to now. How about looking for the closest tree to the cabin or the woodcutter, but within a specified area? And let's go even further. Let's combine the target area, the area around the target area, the building and the unit into one pathfinding optimization exercise. We'll work with an example, and let's work with the segments in this example, since it's more complex than hexes. We want the unit to plant saplings as close as possible to the center of an indicated area. We penalize potential segments by the distance between their parent hexes and the center of the target hex. So the algorithm will see a hex that is actually closer to the building as more costly and closer to the center of the target area as less costly. As the segments get filled up with trees, the algorithm selects wider and wider hexes. 
Now, when the last open segment inside the area has been filled, things get more interesting. The closest segments to the center will now be the segments right next to the edge of the area. One of these will be selected and a tree planted. Next, another one would be selected and the unit could have to walk quite a distance before planting the second sapling, etc. However, it does not make sense for the unit to keep walking to and fro around the edge of the area, leading to a strictly almost circular planted area. It would be a lot more reasonable to plant the four saplings close to each other near whatever segment was chosen, before heading back to fetch more saplings. Even though not every segment planted is strictly the closest segment to the center of the area. To achieve this, we add another penalty to the algorithm, namely the distance between the unit's current location and the potential segment. So a segment that is slightly further from the center of the area, but a lot closer to the unit's current position would be preferred. This leads to some irregular edges and clusters biased towards the cabin and the unit being added onto the hexagon shape of the filled area, which is more natural than a strict circle type shape. And by changing the weights of the penalties applied to distances the unit has to travel, those irregularities can be limited or enhanced. So we now have a combination of the inside of a target area, the area just outside the target area, and biases towards the building and towards the unit's current location all working together in one pathfinding algorithm. Throughout the game's development, many similar combinations have to be designed, catered for in the searching algorithm and properly integrated with the UI, gameplay and mechanics to ensure a smooth player experience. We haven't really covered more complex segment-based path blockers or forcing offsets on certain segments to keep units from clipping into resources, etc. But by this point, charging a couple of bucks for your game is probably warranted, don't you think? But let's look at one final aspect that also needs to be taken into account. When a woodcutter selects a tree to chop down, that entire hex, not only the segment the tree is situated on, is flagged as out of bounds for other units. This prevents more than one unit trying to chop trees on the same hex, since they would get in each other's way and could easily have their trees fall on each other. This is handled by the unit setting a unique passcode on the segment and all the segments of the hex. The pathfinding algorithm can then be instructed to not allow units to path through those segments if they don't have this specific passcode. As soon as the unit has completed its task, the segment gets unlocked again, and all units are free to pass. There is a lot more to discuss around this topic, but let's end it here for today. I hope this visual deep dive has given you a new appreciation of the kinds of things that have to be catered for behind the scenes before a smooth running game can start taking shape. Please consider subscribing and turning on notifications if you'd like to see more of how World Turtles progresses. Goodbye!